Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today in our series of things you missed in Elden Ring videos, we're going to be covering Shifra River. And I googled it, I didn't pronounce this one wrong. It's Irish and it's pronounced Shifra, okay? <laughs> Just wait till someone tells me I've still pronounced it wrong. This is not going to be another Gowl Jail incident, hopefully. <laughs> This will be the first underground area I've covered, so I'll give you a little bit of an intro and talk you through how to get there and what you're looking out for, and then we'll go into the tips. You'll be faced with this area right here as soon as you come down the lift and rest at the first sight of Grace. I'll leave you to explore 95% of this yourself because it's very self-explanatory. Just run around grabbing all the loot. The enemies in this area are an absolute nightmare. They've got a poise of like 9999. They just never stagger. Like, they're slow as hell, they're really easy to dodge, and they don't have tremendous amounts of health. My advice, just ignore them. They drop a very, very minor amount of runes, and they're so slow, plus you can mount up in this area. So, unless you need to kill a group of them for an item, they're fine to kill, it just takes ages. <laughs> what I did for the most part was just mount up, run around, grab the items, and get gone. There's only one item that I really wanted to call out in this area, and to get there, once you're at the stairs leading up into the next area, turn around and head off towards the south where I'm going. You can then do a bit of platforming and hop over these walls. Once you're at the end, there'll be two magic dudes to clear out. You can grab them throwing daggers and then come around this big hole here. You can jump down onto a ledge and then jump down onto that broken pillar. The dung beetle will probably get off before you manage to kill him. Just grab the silver pickled foul feet, jump off after him, and once you take him out, you'll be rewarded with some oracle bubbles. Now we'll head back to the stairs, down the lift, and into the main area. Once you're here, there's a few items to grab and a few enemies to kill, but nothing of note. So I've literally just beelined it all the way along this path, and I'll meet you at the site of Grace just a little bit further down. Once you've rested at the Shifra Riverbank site of Grace, this is where we can really get into the juicy tips and find loads of awesome stuff here. There's going to be a couple of cookbooks, one of which is used to progress an NPC's quest line, an incredible bow, and an incredible talisman, just to name a few. The first tip isn't really something you can miss, but just to help you out with the area, come straight in front of you to this obelisk and light the flame. As you can see here, it's just lit one of the pillars leading up these stairs. There's eight obelisks scattered around this area, and once you've lit all eight, that will grant you access to the boss. And then you can grab the map for this area at the base of the bottom right pillar just here. I won't specifically call out any obelisks in this guide, but through going through these tips, you should find them all no problem anyway. The first item you want to grab, very easy, jump up these rocks and straight back behind you from the site of Grace. Take out these two ancestors and you'll be rewarded with an Armourer's Cookbook 6. Simple as that for that one. For this next tip, we're going to be grabbing a super powerful bow, the Horn Bow. Back at the site of Grace, run towards the eight pillars leading up to the boss. Swing round to the left of them and you'll see you can drop down. And just here, behind these two columns, is the Horn Bow. It's a magic bow that does really reasonable damage even if you have very low intelligence, and because it's got both physical and magic damage, it will deal significantly more damage to a lot of enemies that a regular bow just wouldn't damage, such as the miners in the caves that we've been coming across. And, as it says here, reveals its true worth when used with magic-infused arrows. It basically enhances the power of magic arrows and makes them even stronger. Head just a little tiny bit further up, you'll be able to grab a somber smithing stone too from this site, and you'll find a portal. You don't actually need this portal because it will just take you further along the area that we're going to be exploring anyway, but if you do want to hop through it, it will get you access to an Ashes of War much sooner than usual. So if you jump through, you'll see you're much further to the northeast now, and just by that waterfall there is a scarab. When you kill him, you'll be rewarded with the square off Ashes of War. Once you're done with him, head back to the site of Grace, and we'll move on to the next tip. Future Dom here, just butting in the video halfway through. As I was reviewing the footage, I realised I'd once again forgotten to do that YouTuber thing that we all do and ask you to subscribe. I'm honestly terrible at plugging myself, I hate it, but this is my livelihood, this is how I make a living. So I would just very quickly like to ask you to like the video, comment on the video, to help get the algorithm promoting the channel. And if you are already subscribed, consider turning the notification bell on as well. You'd be surprised how much YouTube value that when deciding how worthy your channel is of being plugged. That's all I wanted to say. I'll let you get back to the video. Thank you. Head directly east to where you see me on the map, and you'll see a spirit spring in front of you. Yeet yourself up on top of this broken bridge. 
you can grab the Ghost Glovewort 3 here, and then be very careful as you're jumping over to the next section. Round the back here, you can grab a Stone Sword key. That's as far as it goes, but as you're coming back, carefully jump back over and you can drop down. At this point, I advise getting off your horse because it's easier to navigate. Hug the wall as you drop down a couple more levels and follow it round to the right. Then you want to drop down again just here. And going back the way you came, you'll be rewarded with 10 Dwelling Arrows, which go hand in hand with the Hornbow because they're incredibly powerful magic arrows. That's it for this tip. Just hop back down and you're done. For this next tip, just head a little bit further northeast up the river and you'll come to these wooden structures in no time at all. Head over to the right and climb up the ladders, taking out the ancestor spirits on the way. You can grab a sliver of meat at the top, and then be careful as you jump down just here. Hug the left wall all the way round and you can get a golden rune 3. Head along the wooden bridge into this tunnel here, and this will bring you to a cave. Hop down and you'll find a merchant. This merchant sells some incredibly valuable things. He's got some soap, which if you didn't know, you can use to rub off things like poison buildup and scarlet rot buildup from your body. It won't decrease the bar of what's already there, but it will stop it from progressing further. Some nascent butterflies used for a few high level crafting recipes. Very cheap stone sword keys. I already have eight, but I'm going to stock up. A larval tier, which as it says, is needed by Renala to grant you rebirth, which means you can reallocate your levels. And then most importantly, the Nomadic Warriors cookbooks 17 and 18. You'll see 18 is significantly more expensive, and it's because this contains a required item to progress Alexander the Warrior Jar's questline. I'm also going to stock up on a load of arrows while here, because fuck yeah. You can grab the hefty beast bone while you're up here, then drop down where the flowers are and grab a smithing stone 4. Let's move on to the next tip. Head a little bit further up the river, try and stay on the left hand side because there's some particularly annoying enemies with ridiculously powerful arrows on the right hand side. So hug the left hand side and swing round to where I am. You can then activate this Sight of Grace which will help if you die, like I did, a lot. Come back to the southwest and once you get to this big toppled over pillar, whether or not you want to clear out the enemies to be more cautious is up to you. If all goes smoothly, all you need to do is get to the top of that pillar, climb up the rubble that it leads to, and you'll find a somber smithing stone level 2, and more importantly, a portal which leads you to the upper section of Shifra River. Here is where we're going to find most of the really juicy loot for this location. Once you're up here, head southwest where I've come to, and you can grab some slumbering eggs. Then turn back round and make a left jumping over this rubble, and you'll see inside this room, there are a ton of them enemies that we faced earlier. Feel free to just ignore them all because it's going to take ages to clear them out. And you can sprint to the back of the room and be rewarded with the great oracular, oracular bubble spell. Sounds silly. And also a somber smithing stone level 5. Level 5! We're getting into the big boy numbers now. Right, come out of this room, hang a left, and you'll see another group of these guys. There's a cluster of silver fireflies here if you want to grab them, and up on this rock, a golden rune 7. That's all the important stuff for this section. Now keep heading north, and eventually, you'll see this badass mother bitch. This is a great enemy, the Dragonkin Soldier. Now, I think it's time for an epic boss montage, with no summons, no blocking, and no magic. Wish me luck. As I die, again, and again, and again. I'm not even joking. During that last attempt, do you see how stupid I was? The fact I wasn't even healing. Do you want to know why? The doorbell rang. The fucking post got delivered. I was desperately trying to kill this boss so I could go and get the post. I was like, I don't have time to heal. Just kill him. Just die. <laughs> Luckily, the ballsiness worked out for the best. Killing him, you're rewarded with 16,000 runes and the dragon halberd. 
Now, hang around here because we've got some more stuff to loot and explore now that he's dead. Okie dokie, go to the big waterfall behind where you just beat the boss. And you'll see splishy splashing around in the water is Marika's Scar Seal, which is essentially the spellcaster's version of Radagon's Scar Seal. So you can equip them both and get a plus three to every single stat. Just be careful because you will start to take like 20 to 25% extra damage from all sources, which at that point starts to become noticeable. <laughs> but with these two talismans on, plus a rune arc, you're currently getting plus eight to every single one of your stats. And that is one of the many things I just adore about this game. Because it doesn't make you feel OP, because eight in any one stat isn't a huge increase, but it's enough that it really lets you branch out your build and you can use so many weapons and spells and items that you wouldn't usually be able to use. It gives you so much freedom and means that every playthrough can be so versatile and just fun. Okay, for the last couple of bits up here, and then we'll finish off back down on the ground floor. Keep heading north, and you'll find a golden seed on the tree here. And then hug the cliff edge all the way around here. And eventually you'll come to a cave right at the end with a rune arc. So I can now show you exactly what I was just talking about a second ago. I'm only level 61, but I've got a good 150 worth of stat points because of all these different increases. I have not put a single point into Int, Faith, or Arcane, and they're all 16 and 17. Crazy. So much fun. We'll finish off the last little bit now. There really is nothing special to call out here. Just for the sake of completeness, I wanted to show you where it goes. Work your way north, northeast, until you get to the site of grace that I've unlocked right at the top here. Now, as you head up these stairs, you can grab a clarifying horn charm, which increases one of the various resilience stats. I can't remember which now, whether it's robustness or immunity, etc. And then at the top of these stairs, you can pop a stone sword key in the statue here. And this lift will take you all the way up to a previously closed off area in Kaelid. We won't visit this area in this video because it's going to be super fucking hard for us right now. We'll unlock it, rest at the site of grace at the top here, and come back to it when I'm doing Kaelid. Feel free to explore it, but be careful. Be very careful. <laughs> and that's it for all the secrets around here. All you need to do now is make sure you've finished lighting the flames on them obelisks and go and beat the boss. Good luck. That's all from me. I hope this was as helpful as always. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.